How's it going everyone? This is Dozer and we are back with an additional video for my room correction series. First off, I am on a different computer away from my home, but the show must go on. Today we're going to be looking at using RoomEQ Wizard with DRC Designer. DRC Designer is a program that uses the source code from this right here. Now, this is usually done manually to create correction filters. However, the person who created this created this to make it more streamlined. Instead of having going through all the steps manually, you're able to do it through this program here. As usual, in the description, there's going to be links to all the debate about using digital room correction. You're welcome to debate it all you want inside the comment section. I'm not here to discuss any of that. I'm just here to show you how to use the programs together. These steps are going to be in the description as well. Basically, you need to install DRC Designer to your C drive directly in there, and you need to install RoomEQ Wizard. There's many tutorials online on how to use RoomEQ Wizard. I even have a couple of videos that cover some of its features. Now, typically what this is going to help people overcome is some of the problems with the DRC designer. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the fact that you have to record a long sweep for both your left and your right. You got to come in here, get your audio interfaces. If you have your measurement microphone, you'll choose it down here. You'll do a record sweep. I'm not going to push the button here. What happens is it's a really long sweep. It's annoying. And then you got to do, it goes from the left to the right. Okay. Well, this allows people that have RoomEQ Wizard, they already have measurements from the past that they may have done, or they just want to do a quick sweep. Because uh, here you could just do a three second sweep with your measurement button. You can set your measurement length by going right here. This is a 5.5 second sweep. You could do a 2.7 second sweep. You can use those as you export them as an impulse response and use them inside of the DRC designer program. I'm going to show you how to do all that to bypass this whole entire thing of measuring through the DRC designer. Because also as you're doing your measuring, you might have to go back and do it again because you're not sure if your level of the sweep is loud enough. You could get an SPL meter and then measure the sweep, but then you're still going to have to go back and sweep it again and hope it's within range. Well, this with RoomEQ Wizard in combination with this, how to use them together, that's what I'm going to show you. For this, you will be needing to measure your left and your right separately. Now, special consideration needs to be given to if you're using a monitoring system where you have a left, a right studio monitor, active powered, and you have an active powered subwoofer. Let me give you an example. So as I said, I've used the sub and I'm going to break this down as fast as I can, but I think it needs to take special consideration as I've said. So check it out. This is me measuring my frequency response in my room with my two studio monitors and my subwoofer. If you're using a home theater system setup, you might be a little bit different. Now, as I said, it's very imperative that you listen to this because otherwise you're going to get it totally incorrect. Okay, now this is mainly for people that have a subwoofer incorporated. As me, like I said, I have a left and a right studio monitor and an active powered subwoofer. If you don't, I'll leave a link in the description or something's going to pop up on your screen and you can skip to the next part or you can just watch this. So if you have a subwoofer, here's what you need to take special consideration with. First up, subwoofer integration with your studio monitors. You're going to want to run some pink noise. You're going to want to follow your manual. I use a custom because I have 500 hertz as per my manual to 1000 hertz. I play that. When I play this, I have my studio monitor, my left studio monitor on by itself. I set it to 80 dB. I then play in this same noise, turn off my left speaker, and turn on my right studio monitor. I then set that one to 80 dB. I then lower my volume because when I turn them both on at the same time, it's going to increase the decibel range because they're both playing at the same time, about five or six decibel. So I lower it down a little bit. I play them both at the same time and I set both my studio monitors, which are now matched to each other. I set those to 80 dB. Next, I route 30 Hertz to 70 Hertz, which is just below the 70 Hertz is just below my crossover. My crossover on my subwoofer is set at 80. I then play, or you could use a subcal, whatever. I'm doing what it says in my manual, so I'm using custom, 30 to 70. I then play this. I now match my subwoofer. Now, the other two studio monitors, they are still on because they do have some sound coming out of them at the crossover frequency. I now set with the subwoofer and the studio monitors on in this specific frequency range. I play the sound. I'm not going to do it here. And then I match that to 80 dB. Now, I'm not done yet. I then bring up real-time analysis, and then I let all of them play, and then I select generator, full range, play, 
Now you have full frequency range pink noise coming out of your speakers. The subs going, the studio monitors are going. I use real-time analysis, and as I'm watching real-time analysis, it's basically showing me my frequency response in real-time. I do some small tweaks to the subwoofer to bring it more in line with my studio monitors. Now, what does that have to do with anything? This is what it has to do with, watch this. If I measure just my left with that correct type of subwoofer matching, I'm gonna get this. Because the subwoofer is playing the lower frequency by itself and it was matched at 80 dB to both speakers. But now you're playing only one speaker. So if I'm just playing my left speaker for a left measurement, well then I'm gonna get something like this. The, the bass is gonna be really high and then the actual studio monitor is gonna be lower in volume because once again, I did not match my subwoofer to the studio monitor. So here is the trick. Now what's gonna happen is when we create these correction filters through this program, it's gonna think, wow, there's a lot of bass here and it's gonna try to compensate and you're gonna lose a lot of your low end. So to wrap this up, and a lot of you already know what I'm about to say, and that is you need to match your subwoofer to one studio monitor only. First you match your left to your right. Once you have those two matched, you're gonna just use your left speaker you're gonna then set the level of your left speaker using your generator, and you're gonna route some, some speaker sounds, let's say 500 to 1000, and then you're gonna set a level to 80 dB, then you're gonna route with that same speaker still on and your subwoofer on, you're gonna route your sub cal, so let's say 30 to 80 hertz, and with the left speaker still on and the subwoofer on, you're now gonna set the subwoofer to 80 dB. And then you could do some real-time analysis if you want, but you don't. So what you've just done is you've matched that sub to with one single speaker playing at a time. So when it does a sweep of your left speaker, it's gonna be matched with the left speaker. When it does a sweep of your right speaker, your sub and the lower frequency is now going to be matched to the right speaker. And you're gonna get something like this instead. This is now ready. Now when it looks at this, the software is gonna correct this. This is more of a flat frequency response. This is more accurate for if the sub was gonna be matched to the left or the right. So now when it creates this correction filters, it's not gonna look at this because you're gonna be sending this impulse response. Now here is the other kicker and you don't wanna forget to do this or it's not gonna work out. If you have a sub, you're gonna wanna go back and recalibrate your sub back to your both your studio monitors. Because when you play in sound, it's gonna be coming out all your speakers. In order to do that, it's real simple. You just need to turn on all of your studio monitors, bring up some pink noise with your speaker cal, set your decibel level by playing this, or you could do your custom. Mine was what, 500 to 1000? I play that, I set it to 80 dB. I don't have to mess with the left or right because they've been matched from the beginning. They're the same level as each other. But I do want to set the volume within my mixer levels of to 80 dB. Because now I'm going to route the sub sound and I'm basically, or your custom of, mine was 30 and 70. I want to play that. Now I just played the speakers that were at 80, now I'm going to play the sub, which is going to be lower in volume, and I am going to bring it up now to 80 dB while I play the sub sound. And then I'm going to re-bring up my analysis for my real-time analysis and rematch it. And then I'm going to do a quick, this is me, I do a quick measurement and I compare it to what it was before. That's just me. Look, I know it seems to really complicate a lot of stuff if you have a subwoofer, but that's just what you have to do. That's the way you have to do it, and you have to do it right. So this is what you're going to need. You're going to need Room EQ Wizard. You're going to have to know how to do measurements. You're going to need Digital Room Correction Designer Software. This is all free stuff, people, okay? You're going to need, for verification of your filters, a real-time analysis. I use Span Plus. This is Span Free. This is free. I have the Plus version, which you have to pay for. You're gonna want something like this. I'm gonna actually use this for this demonstration. So after you download the Digital Room Correction Designer, you wanna install it to your C or whatever your drive is that you're using. Your, the drive letter here because of my instructions I'm using, and if you're gonna follow them in the description, you just might have to change your drive letter because your drive letter might be different. I installed it to my C drive. 
and I just installed it directly to that drive. And then of course you're going to want to install RumiQ Wizard. We're going to measure both our left and our right separately inside RumiQ Wizard. We're going to export those measurements from RumiQ EQ Wizard as an impulse response. Let's go check that out. All right, so I have imported my left and my right separately. Here they are. And we now need to export them as an impulse response. In order to export your measurement as an impulse response, you basically go to the File, Export, Impulse Responses Wave. You're going to choose Mono, and you're going to choose the correct one. My left one, it goes by date, as you can see here. You got, this ends in 4143, this one ends in 4309. And this is my right, and this is my left. So I'm going to select my left. I'm going to choose 32-bit, normalize sample to peak value, mono, OK. And I'm going to save it. I've already done that. I'm going to name it left speaker, just like that. And I'm going to drop it right here. It's already been done. I am then going to, you don't have to select it, because you can just go File, Export, Impulse Response. And now you're going to choose your right. Same settings, hit OK, name that one right. I've already done that. Now after I'm done, I like to verify you don't have to do this, but I'm going to show you, and also so some people can see what the impulse response looks like. This is it. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is what I just got from Room EQ Wizard. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to basically verify that these filters are correct. So all I got to do is I'm going to double click this. This is inside Adobe Audition. I like its frequency analysis and some other stuff that it can do. So here, and then I'm going to go to frequency analysis, bring this up. I am using a 8192 FFT size, Blackman Harris, scan selection. It's going to scan. Once it's scanned, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to set this for my right there. And now I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to go select my right. And I am going to scan it. I am now going to bring this up. So now what we're looking at is my left and my right. So if I bring up RumiQ Wizard, they should match. So if you look here, we got this little two right here, the red and the green. And if we look right here, we got the red and the green. It's about the same there. You come over here, it's all about the same. It's going to be the same. Basically, I'm just looking at the impulse response. Is basically your measurement that you took was exported as an impulse response. And if you do a frequency analysis on that impulse response, you're going to have the same sound or the, the same trace, the same frequency response. So I've just modified this because this little step was missing. And that is you need to place the impulse responses into the SOX directory because what's going to happen is SOX is uh, basically you can get it and use it yourself. There's a, it's once again source code and some people have taken different routes and methods in order to use it. It's basically sample rate conversion and all kinds of other effects. It's real good quality. We're going to use it. It comes with DRC Designer and we're going to go to that directory right now. So here we are, and yours might not look like this because I have this data, because I've already done it a couple of times. It creates this little file here. Now I am in C design, DRC Designer where I am. Now I need to place the files in the correct location, and that is directly into this SOX directory. I'm going to remove these two that I already had in there. Okay, And I'm also going to remove these two files that it created. It's basically going to take my left and my right files here. Sorry about that. Here we go. I'm going to take my left and my right, drop them in there. It is going to take these left and the right and is going to convert them into a, a certain kind of file that it needs in order for DRC to work. It's going to convert them to a PCM with certain aspects and settings that it needs for the software. Now this is where you might mess up. You notice that I have 44100 here? You're going to want to use the sample rate that you used when you measured. I measured at 48 kilohertz. So you're going to want to change this to 48 if you did that inside RumiQ Wizard. Because that is the sample rate of my left and my right. So we need to make sure that you have that. So just so you don't mess up, make sure you correct that. Otherwise, just leave it at 44 or 1. Now, now if you're wondering what I'm talking about, let me show you. Inside RumiQ Wizard here, my preferences when I did my measurement were at 48 kilohertz. And it exported at 48 kilohertz dot wave when it did my left and my right impulse response. So I've placed my impulses into the SOX directory. Now we need to tell SOX to basically convert them to PCM. This is how you're going to do it. First you're going to copy this line. Now you're going to copy this and you're going to use your, your drive letter because you installed it to whatever drive letter minus C. So I'm going to copy that. You're going to right click. You can press control C or you can just right click copy. 
And we are going to, you're not going to see me do this, but in the lower left corner of my screen, I'm clicking on the little Windows button. And in the search bar, I'm CMD. I am bringing up the command line. I'm going to run that as administrator. So here we are. We are going to tell it to basically, we want to go into the CDRC designer directory. So I'm going to right click and paste, hit enter. We are now inside that DRC designer directory inside the SOX directory. And that's where our files are. We're now going to trust the code. We're going to right click, copy this, or control C, however you want to do it. And then we're going to bring it back over command line. And you have to actually right click and paste. Because if you try and control V to paste, you're gonna, it's not going to work. Once you copy and paste that for the left, boom. We have just told Sox, I want you to take the right wave file, do this command, and name it this, and convert it to PCM. Of course, a little bit more technical than that. I'm now going to do the same thing for the right. Hit enter. Now what's happening is I'm going to go redo that second one again so that you can see what is happening. Okay. I'm going to come here and we'll delete the right because that's the files that it's creating. It created my one for my left. Well, I don't have one for my right. So let's see what happens if I create the one for the right again. I'm going to run the same command. Look over to your left when I hit enter. Sox just created the file you're going to need for the program. You are now done with your command line. You can go ahead and just close that down. Let's go look at the next step. And it says, in the Sox directory, which we can verify, there they are. We have our speaker impulse response left and right. And there's the two PCM files. Now we need to place those into the DRC, this directory here. This directory that we're going to place it in is the original software source code that is actually going to be doing everything that the software digital room correction designer looks at and basically runs all the processes that need to happen. So what we have done is we have bypassed having to record your sweep, which takes a long time. And we've made it shorter because we already had our left and our right impulse responses. Basically everything that this is doing past taking the sweep and converting it, we just did it using Room EQ Wizard and the command lines. So let's do our next step. We're going to place those two into the DRC3. Well, let's go find it. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to hold my control key and click on this one. I'm going to control C or you can go right click, copy those files. We're now going to go to into our DRC designer. We need to go to DRC 3.2.0 in this example, and we need to put it into this folder. And as you can see, I already have some there, but I'm going to delete them because as you create more filters, you're going to want to come in here. You're going to delete them. You're going to replace them. So I'm going to delete those. Yep, and I'm going to control V, paste, or just paste the two new files in there. So now we have the two new files in the correct directory where they need to be. So now when you power up DRC Designer, you can skip the annoying sweep and not knowing if you're going to be at the correct levels or not. You know, directly to your target designer, set your curve, your target, what you want your frequency response corrected to. They have other ones you can choose. You can add in your own little points. We're just going to go flat here. And then you go to your generate standard filters. Now, as you can see, my generate selected filters is not checked. That is because I have it select for the incorrect sample rate, 48. Now, sometimes you'll come in and it will be on the correct sample rate and it'll still be grayed out. All you gotta do is go like this and then go back to the sample rate. And there we are. You can use mic calibration files. And when I took my measurement in Room EQ Wizard, I used a Umic One measurement microphone. And I do have the calibration file for 90 degrees pointing at the ceiling. Now, when you purchase a Umic One microphone, you're able to go to the website, enter your serial number, and they give you a 90 degree and a zero degree cal file. But you can't use it with DRC Design. You're going to have to edit it. And these are the, the specifications. When you, This is the original. It has some top header information. And it also has, at the bottom, it doesn't end in a certain frequency. In order for it to work, it needs to be beginning at zero. And all I did was I deleted the whole top line, and I put zero, and I just put the very same that you see here. And then I it also it has to end in 22 kilohertz. So I took the very last thing here, 20,000, and I basically made it the same level. And now we have basically the correct format. So it needs to go from zero to 22. And if you just use those values, you'll be good. Now to clarify, I'm not saying use the exact same <laughs> values that I'm using here. I'm just saying whatever your calibration file ends in, you could just go ahead and put a zero and then put the same value and the same thing for the 22 kilohertz. All right. 
If someone wants to debate that, I don't really care. There's probably another way you could do it, but this will work fine. So you click on the Use Microphone Calibration file, you go to the Modified DRC file, you open it, and now you are good to go. Now, whatever you have checked is what it's going to create filters for. And when he creates those filters, it's going to place them in this directory here. We'll go back to our DRC designer. It's going to place them right into this folder. So we're going to stick right here. We're going to go create them. We are going to create just the strong. Okay, we're going to create it right now. Generate selected filters. This is real time. It is now deconvolving, doing deconvolution and some other stuff, and basically inverse. A lot of stuff I'm not going to get into, and it's basically creating your filters. And as it creates them, we'll go look at the folder it's putting them in over here. You see it's doing some stuff. Don't worry, that's not your file. Don't mess with that until it says it's complete. It's going to say it is complete down here. And then once it says it's complete, you're good to go. And it is now complete. It has finished generating your filters, or filter. In this case, we are using strong. If you want to know more about what each filter does, if you visit the website, and then specifically this one, it tells you. Okay, it tells you. You can even go in there and modify and do your own custom filters. Okay, again, same sample rate. When you click on one of these, it sets it to the preset. And you can go in there and you can adjust if you want no or less high frequency correction, less mid correction. You can basically uh, diminish those and just focus on your lower frequencies, all kinds of stuff. That is all going to be on the help website and more in depth, even more in a lot of the debate. If you're all sciencey, you can come down here and read this. I read all this, I've looked into all of it, but I'm not going to get into all that here. Now, each of your filters is going to be stereo, 48,000, strong, minimal, ERB, if you want to know what those are, like I said, go check them out. And you can now load these into your convolution plugin on your master bus inside of your recording program, your DAW, your Digital Audio Workstation, on the master bus. If you want to know special stuff and special considerations when doing that, you might want to go check out the first video in the series. Now, since I'm at a different location, I'm not in my studio, I am going to science up a little thing. I'm going to use my wizardry skills, and I'm going to create a session that we can basically do a theoretical test, because I'm not in my studio right now, and I can't run my sweep through my program, through the plugin, through the convolution, and see what the correct response is, as I, as I have done in a previous video. We're just going to do it theoretically, and it's going to be accurate because of the way we're going to do it. My two top convolution plugins for doing this type of stuff are SIR2 and Fog Convolver. They both have a little bit different capabilities, but they're both super awesome. I'm not getting paid by them to say this, but they allow you to have the in and out signal with just a convolution without any extra special mojo that some others are probably trying to add, according to my analysis, and you get what you put you get in and you get out, you basically, you're not adding any special sauce, okay? Unless you want to, because then you can go in here and add some EQ and stuff like that, but you don't want to do that. You want to go no dry, so you can turn your dry off right here by clicking on that, and then you select your wet at 100%. And that's pretty much it, of course, stereo in, stereo out. Over here, you go, you bring your dry down, you make it 100% wet, and you don't mess with any of this stuff. Then you select your impulse response, which is going to be a stereo file. Now, I don't have those right here where I am at. So I'm going to be using Liquid Sonics Reverberate LE. It's a free plugin. You can download it and use it. So let's go do that. So let's go do a test. What we're going to do is we're going to export an impulse response of my room left and right as a stereo impulse response. So I have my left and my right measurement here. I'm going to go File, Export, Impulse Responses Way. Basically, my measurement is an impulse response. I'm going to select Stereo. I'm going to choose my left one, which is 4143. My right one, which is 4309. 32-bit, normalize, okay, I'm going to name it My Room Stereo, or whatever you want to name it, save it. We now have just exported our measurements as an impulse response. We basically want the sound of our room. Now we need some pink noise to throw that sound onto. We're basically going to create our room as if we're measuring our room through the plugins. So here we go, we're going to generate pink noise, we're going to do full range, leave it at negative 20. 
I'm going to save it as what I already have it here, which is pink noise, so we're good to go. So here's my setup. I'm trying to recreate my room on my first track. I put my pink noise. I'm going to set up a little loop point here. All right, so we're good to go. Turn looping on. Looping is on. Now, I need to basically create my room from this pink noise so that it will sound like the pink noise is being played in my room. So what I do is I open my reverberate plug-in, I bring it all the way dry. Uh, the way I'm just going to put a negative zero, negative one, and you load your impulse response by clicking here. I go and I find that my room stereo, the one that, this is basically my room that we just now created from the impulse response. Don't mess with anything else. Don't mess with the EQ section. We basically want, this is the power button for the EQ section. We want it to be just the impulse response. So, when I play this pink noise, it is going to sound as if it's being played in my room and it's being sent to the measurement microphone. This is my measurement microphone over here. Well, let's just pretend. Um, or you could say that I am putting this on my master bus and doing the corrections. So, this is that Stereo Strong, basically the correction filter that was created by DRC Designer. This is going to take that signal and recorrect it using the correction filters. You want to make sure that you set this at about the same setting if I can even get it there. I don't like that you... No, I just had it. You can't press control or shift or anything. It's not like about this plugin. At least I can't do it here to basically slow down the movement. So same settings. Make sure that if you if you had this on, you have it on also. I'm not going to mess with it. We're just going to leave it like this. And make sure that you have the correct impulse response, your correction filters, and do not have your EQ section on. So now what we're doing is we are sending out this room sound to this plugin to get corrected. And we're going to analyze it with span plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the correction. We're going to come here and make sure that our room is on. And you're not going to hear this when I play it because of where I'm at. It doesn't have a special mixer that I use. I use a patch mix and I'm able to basically route everything wherever I want to go at home. But I don't have that here. But it doesn't really matter because you don't want to really hear the pink noise anyway. It's kind of annoying. I'll let you know when I play it and you're going to see when I'm playing it. So we'll be good. So let's go bring up span, and I'm going to show you how to set it up in order to do this. Because normally when you get it, it's in its default stereo mode. I'm playing it right now, and you're only going to see, in this case, we are only seeing the left. Okay? Well, we want to see both, so this is what you do. Dull mono. Edit. We want our averaging to be all the way to here, but we'll bring this down just for this test. Your slope is be on 4 or something, you want that on 3. Okay, you want your block size to be set kind of high, eight one nine two. And you, after you get these settings, you can close that, and you can go copy to left. So now we change the color of this. We just enacted the left. If it's not, you're gonna have to come in here and enact it because it might be like this. But usually, when you say copy to left, it automatically brings it up because we're in dull mono. Now, I am playing it. That is my room measurement. That's inside Room EQ Wizard. Those are the measurements on my left and my right. That is what you're looking at right now. Because I am playing the impulse response with through the pink noise up here. And I am analyzing that with this plugin. Playing it again. Now, when I enable this plugin down here, I am now correcting it. So it should flatten out significantly. Now my averaging for this test, I am choosing a, a slower average because I want you to see the change when I click on this. Otherwise, if I have it on a higher averaging, it's going to take forever for you to see the change. So let's go ahead and play the room sound, and then we are going to correct it using the impulse response we have loaded into the, the correction filters we got from DRC Designer. I am playing it. There is my room. Now let's correct it. So now we are correcting the response from the same position as the microphone was before. So this is kind of like a test to see if I was to measure through my DAW, through the plugin, through Room EQ Wizard, because I can do it because I have a special way I can set it up using my patch mix, I would get a pretty flat measurement. All right, so if you didn't change the location of any of your files and all, you can just fire this back up. It's going to remember everything. It's going to remember all the ones that you had loaded. So all you can do some custom filters. Here we go. So let's change this down. to Put it on strong. Change it down, let's say, about 12. Let's bring this down all the way. Let's generate this custom filter. Now you can also go into the target designer. We'll do that here in just a second. We're going to test out two different filters. We'll generate a custom one and we'll compare it to the strong filter. 
that we had originally created, which is right here. It's now creating the new one. So it's created our new one. Let's go into here. Let's open these up real quick. We'll open this custom one here. You can barely see it. That's okay. I'll hit enter. Let's go into the waveform view. Let's look at it. that's our impulse response that's getting that we're basically using for correction. Let's do a frequency analysis. And we'll scan it. We'll zoom in. Now what you're seeing here, this orange one, I had scanned it just a little bit ago. That's the strong filter. These are the filters. These are the correction filters. This is the one that I did a custom. It's like less drastic. And then you have the strong, which is just really a lot of filtering going on to the sound. So this will have a different effect on the correction. We can go in here. Let's do a deep tilt, too. We're basically going to leave a lot of the bass. We're going to cut down some of the high frequency. Uh, we're going to use this as our target. And we're going to generate the strong filter. You can just come in here, uncheck all these. I'll leave the minimal so you can see what that looks like. And we'll leave this one here. And I'll generate these right here. you got to select the correct sample rate. We're using a different target. We're going to create these, and we'll come back. All right, so we created the ERB, the minimal and the strong. Now, the tutorial is pretty much done, but there's some other little tips I could probably show you. Uh, most convolution plugins have a normalization feature built into them. However, you could pre-normalize them if you want to. But here's we can also look at the filters. Let's go check them out some more here. So let's go check out the ones we just created inside. You can just open them like I'll open all three of them. Go ahead and open those. So here they are. You can see, now watch, let me give you an example. This one here, you see how the size of the waveform there, when I go to this one, it's like, uh, it moves or whatever. Let's do an analysis of this one. Let's clear this. Let's scan it. And we will do a snapshot of the left, change it to the right. Correction, left and then the right. We got a little snapshot of that. Now let's go do this one, and let's see something here. Window, frequency analysis, check this out. Scan. There we go. So they're pretty much the same level, so we're good. Sometimes they'll be at different levels, your impulse responses. And what I meant by pre-normalize is you can actually just edit your file. This is up to you. I mean, I don't really reckon. The more processes you do, you know, rounding errors and all that kind of stuff when dealing with digital, you can start to see some degradation. But it's up to you. I can normalize this if I wanted to. I can just go to Effect, Amplitude, Process, normalize it to, let's say, negative 0.3. Boom, and then we're good to go. But like I said, convolution plugins have that built in, so you're good to go.